for hanging out with me in the garden today. Today on my video, we're gonna tackle some really um, easy projects, but more difficult because today it's supposed to be 102. So this is gardening in the heat. I'm gonna talk about this beautiful cut leaf coneflower. You can see here what it looks like up close, but look at the base. It looks pretty straggly, Stuart. Uh, but it's one of those plants that from a distance looks wonderful. And you can see how I've got it punctuating the other side. So we're gonna talk about how I'm going to handle those today. We're also gonna be sharing a few uh, tips on hot weather gardening. So make sure that if you're not already subscribed, you hit the subscribe button. And if you are, hit the notification button. So now let's get started. Well, today's project is actually starting out in my compost tumbler. And I am emptying it out because my goodness, look, I have so much material to be composted. And actually it's one of the good things about this hot weather is you can create compost rather rapidly when temperatures are this high. So I'm emptying this out so I can take some of the material in my composting reservoir and put it in here. So I've got a good bit of my homemade compost. I've got this in one of my baskets. And Stuart, are you following along with me? I am. Now things are kind of a wreck. Here are the posts that I originally used to put up my shade tarp. And we're gonna do a follow-up on that so that you guys know how it ultimately turned out and what worked and what didn't. And I thank you so much for all of the great, great, great comments and very, very helpful tips. Okay, so this is the area that we're tackling today. So here's what I'm thinking. Today, it is supposed to get up to 102 or 104. We've got 100 degree temperatures along those same lines, maybe even hotter for the next five days. So I've decided that I just, as I said earlier, I just want things to look presentable now. It's actually not too bad this morning, especially under this shade tarp, which I'm happy to report is stable right now. But I've decided that particularly for this border, and Stuart, if you don't mind showing the border along its length, you can see it doesn't really look too bad now. But I'm also thinking about not only what it looks like now, but what it's going to look like in the fall, because that is where I'm gonna put my efforts into thinking about the near future and in the fall. So while this cut leaf cone flower, it's a form of Rudbeckia, it was gifted to me by a friend. And while from a distance it looks good, up close, not so great. So I've decided that like other perennials that you cut back hard, I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice the blooms in the garden now. It may or may not flower again, but I am fairly certain, fairly confident that it will put out another beautiful tuft of growth here at the base. Where you can see it has a lot of ugly legs to hide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut lots of these. Show us where you're cutting. Okay, I'm cutting. Now in this case, it doesn't really make any difference because I'm ultimately gonna bring it all the way down to the ground, but thank you for pointing that out, Stuart. If I was just cutting from this to bring it inside for a flower arrangement, I would probably cut right here at a node. Can you see right yeah, there? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I'd probably, and notice that I'm new, using pruners, not scissors, because the pruners will make a clean, really good cut. If I use scissors, it would probably, they probably wouldn't be sturdy enough, and they would kind of squash the stem itself and prevent good water uptake. So I am not going to do that, but I'm gonna go through here, and I am going to cut the flowers off at about the height that I want them cut. And then on my little helper table here, I have a not nearly big enough container for, uh, with water for these cut flowers so they'll stay fresh. And I'm doing this in the morning, in the cool of the morning. One thing, as I was talking about putting up the tarp yesterday, I said in general, a person can never have 
too many S hooks or bungee cords to that, I would add this summer, you can't have enough really large buckets because I find that I continually need a large bucket that is lightweight and easily transportable for a myriad of projects. Now these I am going to arrange, and I'll probably do that for you later, in some kind of container. And this is about the height that I want them to be. If I wanted to do some really dramatic statement making arrangements, I would keep them tall and put them in a very tall container and maybe put them by my front door or something. But right now, this is the maximum height that I want them to be. And I got this container years ago from Pottery Barn, and I love it. Okay, Stuart, I tell you what, let's speed things up a little bit. As I finish this area, and then after I got all, get all of this cut back, I'll meet you back here. How's that? Now, Stuart just asked me how far back could I cut these stems that are now uh, bare of all of their flowers. And I took a bunch of them there. I'm gonna have to find another bucket to get them in some water. But I'm cutting it all the way back to the base. Oops, right here. Okay, there we go. Show us again. Okay, I cut it all the way back. Oh, hit the camera. Uh oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Stuart. Did I hit your eye? No, just the camera okay. got knocked down. Okay. okay. All the way back to the base. And then while I'm down here with my sharp pruners, I'm going to go ahead and cut the stalks into smaller pieces because when they go in the compost pile, then they will decompose a lot better. And right now, just to make it easy on myself, I'm just going to throw them out there and I'll put them in my debris basket later. Now the very, if you guys I know are so much like me, we're kind of alike in that even though we can't stand to lose those flowers to cut them back right now because they still look good, nevertheless, okay, here is, I digress. Here is one of those just obnoxious trumpet vine runners that's coming up and I'm just cutting that off to the base for now. Uh, but as much as we hate to cut the flowers, nevertheless, we're finding it very gratifying. And that's my question of the day, is how cathartic and how gratifying do you find these kind of projects where even though things look kind of ugly outside because of the heat, you can nevertheless improve the appearance of a garden space simply by doing some good garden grooming and it's not unlike when I prune up an overgrown shrub or something. It is very satisfying to me. And it's satisfying because not only am I correcting and improving the appearance of the plant and all of its legginess, but I am also uncovering all of the things that this has been covering up, like my boxwood cones and the other things maybe in the foreground that are still looking good. Now here is another, another tip and another practice that I actually discovered or thought of, and I think of it now when I was pregnant. Yes, Stuart, that was a long time ago. But 
those of you who have been pregnant can remember what it was like when you were in your eighth or ninth month and it was really hard to get down and get back up and i discovered then <laughs> that when i was doing household chores and things i'd get down and i'd think okay and this is the tip as long as i'm down here <laughs> I might as well do as much as possible before I get back up again. So the same holds true now while I am down here in this gardening neck of the woods, then I'm gonna do some other things like removing any weeds that I find. I'm going to observe that I've got something here that looks like it, I don't know what it is. It, it might even be a Japanese maple. I'm not sure, but I'm going to notice it. I'm gonna recognize it and mark it for future reference. And maybe because I have a drip, irrigation drip right there, I'm gonna give it some extra love and put that right there in case I want to shop my own garden and dig it up. The other thing I'm gonna do is groom the surrounding plants. So I have some Rudbeckia maxima here. I've got some, what else do I have here, Stuart? I've got some iris foliage in the area. And as long as I'm down here, I might as well kind of tackle that too while I'm working on this same project. So Stuart, it's too hot for everybody to hang out with me right now. Let's speed this up. That might be a video on its own because when you talked about why you're down there, make sure you do what all the things you can do. It's a lot like the when you're upstairs and you're going to go downstairs, make sure to remember to take anything that needs to go with right. you. You could do a whole video on yes. things you can do while you're doing other things yes. that are easy yes. and that would be a fun one. We might start a new hashtag while you're there. Yeah, exactly. So Stuart, as long as I was down here, as long as I was here, I did a lot of other things. I cut back some ratty looking common tall flocks. I've exposed this old fence, so I can probably do some fence repair down here. I am making sure that this tarp is still stable on this concreted in fence post. And I also am removing lots of bent foliage. Now, some of this bent foliage is because it's been 102. Some of it is also because some of those posts came down and fell right on top of it. Now, here is, here's another observation that I'm making right now. I've often said that iris, and forgive me if you're an iris lover, but iris blooms, while I think they're beautiful and exotic, they just last a nanosecond in my own garden. So I typically grow them more for their foliage or their foliage. And I find it really beautiful because it's kind of a blue gray and it looks great against the blue gray foliage of some of the other things that are in the foreground. However, this time of year, even stalwart foliage like the iris foliage can start looking ratty. So while I'm down here, I'm removing some of the ratty foliage. And if I find that this entire stand starts to brown too much, I will do the same thing and I will cut it back all the way to the base. So it's kind of tough love gardening. So in here, I have removed 
whatever weeds, there really weren't a lot of weeds in here. And by the way, I'll do, talk about this in my follow-up commentary on the tarp, but a lot of you said that, I, that it would have been helpful if I had sunk those buckets into the ground. Well, let me tell you, and put them in concrete. Well, let me tell you that this ground is so dry, it's almost like concrete. So it would have been extremely difficult, but I'll tell you what we decided on anyway as we do an epilogue. So it looks considerably better than I think it did at first. Some of this debris I'm just going to leave here. I'm going to move. I've got a stepping stone in here that I'm going to move to the foreground so that I can use it for practical purposes later. I have them kind of interspersed. That's another tip. I have, they don't have to be good looking because they're just functional. So I've got some cinder block here that I keep here just so I can use them as stepping stones. But I have revealed the beauty of this boxwood, which happily is not suffering. Later, when it's cool enough, I can do a light prune on it. I have exposed, cut back, and hopefully rejuvenated this cut leaf cone flower. Now what I'm going to do before I start my garden cleanup is I'm going to take my compost and I'm going to give this whole area including that maybe sweet little Japanese maple and the boxwood. So would you leave the Japanese maple there if it grew? Yes, I'm going to leave it here. That'd be beautiful. Yeah. Well, oh, if it got big? Yeah. Probably not, and I'll here? tell you why. Because this, that's a great question, because this is southern exposure, and it would get crispy and fry. And so I so you guys, I thought, so make so many great aesthetic recommendations when I'll say what should I plant here or whatever and typically you all your design eye is spot on and frequently that says oh the arch of a Japanese maple would be wonderful and in an ideal world not in Oklahoma <laughs> that would be a great aesthetic choice but sadly very infrequently in my garden is it an option because the exposure is just too brutal for it so while from a design perspective it would look great, from a real life, real world perspective, it's not an option. Now, because it's so small and it's being protected by the foliage and the, the shrubs that are in the foreground, it's getting some shade. But once it gets to be big enough to make a statement in and of itself and be moved to a pot or another area of the garden, then I will move it, but not especially when it is 102 or 104. But I've identified it, I've put a dedicated drip head on it, so hopefully this will grow up to be a great specimen and I can shop my own garden later. The boxwood's gonna appreciate some of this compost. And even though this area looks bare, it nevertheless looks very, very tidy. I will come back in here and water this very, very well. And by the way, in that compost, I added a little bit of balanced granule organic fertilizer, a 444 that will be slow release, that will also really help this area. And the other nice thing about it is I put a rather thin layer down, but I can then come back this fall and sprinkle some poppy seeds, larkspur, other seeds like that on top of that very receptive, wonderful compost. And hopefully, um, if I have covered up any of the things that went to seed, this will remedy that because I will scatter some more seed again. So right now, I'm going to clean up this mess 
Again, it's too hot for you guys to hang out with me to do this, so I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to get the rest of these cone flour in some water, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to remedy this great big hole in my border that I have now. Okay, here's a tip. I find a really stiff whisk broom to be invaluable in cleaning up, even more so than a blower, because I can be a little bit more targeted in where I sweep things. Again, it's one of those immediate gratification jobs that I just love. Now one other thing that I will do, but not at this time, is I'm gonna come back here and do a little bit more work on the plants in the foreground. This trade scontia or spiderwort. I'm gonna do some cutting on it so it will grow more bushy and a few other things which I'll share with you later. But for now, that pretty much completes this project until I fill that gap. Okay, as I said, I've gotten all this done. It may look barren, but it definitely looks tidy. I'm watering that in really well so all of that good compost and organic fertilizer can penetrate down to the root zone. I'm going to cool off this boxwood a little bit, though I'm not going to do any pruning on it. I'm going to water what's in the area. I'm going to reassess just a little bit, and in that reassessment I've decided that I'm going to take down this goldsturm rutabecchia because it doesn't look so great. And as long as I'm practicing tough love, tough love all around, that way I can feel like I have really gotten... Out, it's kind of hard okay, sorry. Out. Yeah, some closure. It had, it just looked less than its best. So I could use that as a little cut flower or not. But Rudbeckia is so vigorous. Goldstorm Rudbeckia. And there, as you can see, I've talked about different forms. And as I'm cleaning up, you can also see that I have like cuttings and stuff like this. This probably was a downer from the disaster that was the tarp, the tarp posts. But I've watered this all in really well. And I will save the foreground for later. But I have, if you'll notice, I put in one of my plant stands because I think they're absolutely indispensable. This, this Rudbeckia maxima keeps trying to stick me up in the nose and, and this seed head gets so many pollinators that I don't want to cut it off. So I'm just going to live with it. But I've got a sweet olive here, which by the way is one of the reasons that I have so many container plantings because I know Know thy garden well. I know that later in the year, these kinds of things are gonna happen. And so I have container plantings that I can then plop into place. And by the way, this is a faux concrete pot that I did in one of my previous videos. Stuart, we might put up the link. And by the way, somebody sent me some images. She had just watched my video on this and sent me some images of some plastic pots that she had just transformed into faux terracotta using my method and they looked a lot better than my job did. So kudos to you. I'll try to put those in the community tab. But right now I may need to do some zhuzhing on that. I might need to relocate it a little bit. But at least it doesn't scream that I have cut that back. I will probably relocate it a little bit 
as the rudbeckia that I cut back begins to grow, and I will definitely, in one of my Today in the Garden, give you an update on that. But for right now, this sweet olive will do fine. It can handle this exposure, very important. And I also like the fact that it is complementary to the other blue gray tones that I have in this area. Thank you guys for hanging out in the heat with me. I hope you enjoy this working in the garden and I'm gonna finish up my job now. Well, if you've held on this long, here is your outfit of the day. My glasses are Ray-Ban, compliments of Poshmark. My earrings are from whence I know not where. Uh, they were gifted to me. <laughs> um, my top is Morona from Target. I've had it forever, and I've started wearing long sleeve shirts in the garden so that when I'm actually working, in addition to the sunscreen I put on my forearms, I can roll down the sleeves and that gives me a little bit uh, of additional protection. My skirt, my apron, this actually came from a company in Australia who had great stuff and it was part of a research project that I'm doing for my 2023 QVC line. I'm thinking about doing some soft goods in the way of gardening aprons and trugs and things of that nature and I wanted to sample different ones to see what features I really liked. I love this one. I love products from Australia. I have to give you guys a shout out down under. I love your aesthetic. Sadly, for those of you here in the US, I'm not even gonna provide a link because it was really cost prohibitive for them to ship this far. And um, so that's kind of a little bit about that, but nevertheless, I absolutely love this. It has pockets, it can hold my cell phone, my pruners, all sorts of things. Uh, my cutoffs are just some thrifted pants that I got and cut off. What can I say? I don't even know what <laughs> brand they are. <laughs> <laughs> and my shoes, because I'm not really doing any digging today and I want to remain cool and slip them on and off for just some of these cloud shoes from Amazon. Now, I also want to do a shout out for today to two different people. Number one, Jeanette in South Carolina sent me this wonderful garden junk book because she knows how how much we all in uh, on the Linda Vodder channel, how much we all love thrifting and using things in our garden that are inexpensive. And this gives some really fun ideas. Thank you, Jeanette. Okay, that was kind of a creepy picture <laughs> to go to. <laughs> um, I have a thing about dolls. Um, but nevertheless, I wanted to show you this. You might want to order it yourself. Stuart, I'll try to put a link up. But thank you, Jeanette from South Carolina. That was so kind of you. And also, I want to give a shout out to my friend Nita, who has been a follower and a subscriber forever because she sent me some fun little um, stationery items and I want to thank both of you for doing that and Stuart have I forgotten anything I don't think so okay very good well there you go there's your outfit of the day